Hello guys, um, we're doing temperature today. We just checked our homework. Uh, we're going to read this, it's a very short read. Uh, you'll find it under your classroom work and all that stuff, uh, along with the questions. Um, anyhow, short read, do well on the uh, homework questions. They do count as a quiz, remember that. I wanna average them out. Um, then we're just going to take talk about the project that we're going to start tomorrow. Okay, so that's where we are. All right, here we go. Brady and Leo, let's pay attention. That's all right. All right, what is temperature? Okay, temperature can be a difficult property to define. Okay, in our everyday lives, we use the word temperature to describe the hotness or the coldness of an object. In physics, the temperature is the average kinetic energy of the moving particles of a substance, okay? The average kinetic energy of a moving particle in a substance, okay? You probably want to kind of tuck that one away in case you see it on a homework question. How is temperature measured? Temperature is measured using a thermometer, okay? And there's different scales. We talked about that. You've got the Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kevin's, okay? And we'll talk about those a little bit more, okay? So how does it work? A thermometer takes advantage of the scientific property that is called thermal expansion, okay? Most substances will expand and take up more volume as they get hotter, okay? Liquid thermometers have some sort of substance, usually mercury, but in today's, uh, we talked about, it's generally alcohol, actually, in, in today's, uh, the ones that you use for around the house, it's usually a, a, an alcohol. And it's enclosed in a glass tube, of course. Uh, and the reason it goes up is because as it gets hot, it does expand, and because it is basically captured in that little glass tube, it's got nowhere else to go, so it goes up, okay? And then when it gets cooler, it comes down, okay? As the temperature rises, the liquid expands and fills up more of the tube. When the temperature drops, the liquid contracts and makes less, uh, it takes up less of the tube, okay? So the temperature, of course, can be read by the lines cal calibrated on the side of, a, of the tubing, okay? Uh, Monday or Tuesday of next week, we will, we're going to do some experiments and I'm going to let you guys actually uh, use the thermometers and we'll, we'll, get, we'll take some temperatures and things like that. Okay? See, see what if we have a and if you can read it. What if you have what? A steamer. They're not taking yours. They're, they're not that type of thermometer. Okay. <laughs> temperature scales. There are three main temperature scales that are used today. Celsius, Fahrenheit, and Kelvin. Uh, Celsius is the most common temperature scale in the world, okay? Uh, Celsius uses the unit degrees and the abbreviations such as uh, degree, sign, and a big C, okay? The scale sets the freezing point of water at zero degrees Celsius, and the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius, okay? What's that no, uh, Fahrenheit is used in the United States and like some little remote island. The rest of the world uses Celsius. Okay? Fahrenheit, the temperature scale most commonly used in the United States. Okay? Uh, Fahrenheit sets the freezing point of water at 32 degrees and the boiling point at 212 degrees. Okay? Kevin's. It's the standard unit of temperature that is most used by scientists, okay? Kevin's doesn't use the, uh, the degree symbol like the other two scales. When writing the temperature in Kevin, you just you simply put the K, okay? It uses absolute zero, and you're going to see this again too, absolute zero as the zero point of its scale. Okay, so when it says zero, it says absolute zero. That's zero. It has the same increments uh, as Celsius in the 100 increments between freezing and boiling, okay? Uh, and if you ever need to convert, you know, if you're ever being held 
hostage in a warehouse somewhere. <laughs> in order to escape, you need to convert the uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit and back. Here's the formula. Okay. Uh, I don't. I seriously don't think that's ever going to happen to you. Um, so, but if it does, now you're ready. Okay. Celsius and Fahrenheit. Okay. Uh, you take Celsius equals Fahrenheit minus 32, whichever, whatever the group of temperature it is, minus 32, then you divide it by 1.8. Okay? And to get uh, Fahrenheit, it's one, uh, your Fahrenheit equals 1.8 times the Celsius plus 32 degrees. I know. Okay? Uh, absolute zero, okay, absolute zero is the coldest possible temperature that any substance can reach, okay? Uh, it is equi uh, equal to a zero Kelvin or negative 273.15 degrees Celsius or negative 459.67 degree Fahrenheit. That seems warm. Okay, so that is, the, uh, that is absolute zero. You're going to have a question on absolute zero on your homework. Okay, temperature and the state of matter. Temperature has an effect on the state of matter. Each substance of matter will go through different phases as the temperature increases, uh, including solid, liquid, and gas. Okay, one example of this is water will change from ice, okay, where it is a solid, that's when it's the coldest, to water, liquid, as it starts to warm up, and then when it gets to be the hottest that it's going to get, when it gets really hot, it becomes a vapor, a gas, okay? We'll do an experiment Monday or Tuesday that will demonstrate that, okay? Uh, interesting facts about temperature. Uh, temperature is independent of the size or quantity of an object. This is called intensity property. Uh, the Fahrenheit scale is actually named after a Dutch physicist named Daniel Fahrenheit. Uh, temperature is different quantity from total amount of thermal energy in a subject, the uh, substance, which is independent uh, uh, on the size of the object. Celsius was actually named after a Swedish guy. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea. I had no idea. Yeah, I had no idea that um, Celsius was a Swedish name. It says it's cool. dependent. It's fine, Caleb. Well, that changes the whole idea of it. It's fine. Well, Caleb, since you've got it right in front of you and you can read it, yeah. well, back again, I misspoke. I apologize. And I will try to return the favor the next time you do. Okay? Self okay, let's see. As substances approach its absolute zero, they can achieve some interesting property such as superfluidity and superconductivity. All right, that's about eight and a half minutes of your life that you will never get back. Bye.